his fingers back. What we're going to do today is a little Hawaiian swordfish. So we're going to start off, I'm just going to season it with a little salt and pepper on both sides. And I got a super hot, well-oiled grill that we're going to throw, put it on. You can hear that sizzle. You want to make sure you hear that sizzle. You want your grill to be nice and hot. What that's going to do is that going to, it's going to create some really nice grill marks for you. Um, and not only does that look beautiful, but it's also going to create a really nice flavor, that really nice uh, char flavor that you want on any kind of piece of grilled fish or grilled meat. Um, it really enhances the quality and the flavor of the fish. Um, so we're just going to we're going to put it on one side, we're going to leave it on one side probably for about 30 seconds and then we're going to take it and switch it over. Alright, so after this 30 seconds that you got it on one side, we're going to turn it and we're going to flip it at a 45 degree angle. Just go right underneath the fish. If your grill's hot enough, this will come off real easy off the grill. And you're just going to flip it on the other side. You're going to go from this to this. Alright, so another 30 seconds has gone by. So what we're going to do now, we're going to simply turn the fish over. Okay? What happens is you've got these beautiful grill marks. They're in a diamond shape. Okay? That diamond shape is the result from doing a 45 degree angle on one side, turning it to another 45 degree angle on the other side, creating the diamond effect on the grill. Uh, and then when we turn it over, we're going to do the same thing on the bottom side. Alright, so now what we're going to do, the, the uh, swordfish is finished cooking on the grill. Got some really nice char marks on both sides of the fish. Now we're going to finish it in the oven. It's cooked about medium rare right now. We want to cook swordfish all the way through. Okay, you don't want to eat swordfish medium rare. You don't want to eat it medium. You want to go a little bit past medium, uh, just under medium well. You want the fish to be nice and firm to the touch, okay, when you eat it. Right now it's a, it's a little bit uh, undercooked, it's about medium rare. So we're just going to go finish it in the oven. So after it's been in the oven about five to six minutes, we're going to pull the swordfish out of the oven, okay. Make sure that you have a uh, towel in your hand, you don't want to burn yourself. Okay, and here's the swordfish when it comes out of the oven. It's got a really nice golden brown look to it. Okay, what you want to do now, you want to you want to physically touch it. All right, you want to make sure that it's real nice, kind of firm to the touch. Okay, that's about right now. It's cooked it's about medium, a little above medium. Okay, transfer this to a nice cool plate, and I'm going to let it rest so the swordfish doesn't overcook on us. So the next step of the swordfish dish is we're going to make the starch. We're going to make the bottom uh, of the plate right now. Okay. We got a hot pan going here. Going to put a little about a tablespoon of oil in there. And what we're going to do is we're going to add our garlic and our shallots first. Okay. So you want to put probably about a half a Six. teaspoon of each in there. You're going to take a little bit of our sliced shallots Six. like that. You're going to hear that sizzle. Okay. So what you want to do, bring it back on the heat, take your tongs, just kind of stir it around, make sure you get a nice brown, uh, a nice slightly golden brown color on everything. We're going to add our Israeli couscous, okay, you just want to throw it right in on top of there. Probably about half a cup worth. Then we're going to add fennel, a few slices of the shaved fennel, okay. We're going to bring that back on the stove and kind of move that around, make sure everything's well incorporated in there. Now, next step, we're going to take a little bit of that chicken broth. I'm using approximately uh, two ounces here. We're just going to throw that right in the pan. Yeah, a little salt and pepper to that. Then we're going to add our baby spinach. I'm just going to add a small handful of baby spinach right in there. So we're going to kind of cook that spinach around. 
let all those flavors develop together. Let let it get that all that fennel, let the aromatics of the fennel kind of infuse into your starch here. All right, so here's here's what we got going on here. This is about where it looks. Okay, that's what you're looking for. Okay, what you're going to do at this point is throw approximately a tablespoon of your uh, Parmesan cheese in there. Then you're going to bring it back to this, the uh, fire. You're going to let that cheese melt a, just slightly, and then you're good to go. I'm going to add, I'm, I'm seeing my uh, couscous is getting a little bit dry, so I'm going to add just a tiny bit more chicken stock to that. You want your couscous a little bit moist. You don't want it dried out. You want it, you don't want it wet, but you want it a little bit moist. Just gonna swirl that around a little bit. And this is exactly what we're looking for. That's what you're looking for right there. Now we're gonna make the sauce. We're gonna get our pan nice and hot. Okay, I've already gotten it really nice and hot. You're gonna wait till it starts to smoke a little bit. Start. You wanna see that smoke coming off the pan. That's how you know your pan's uh, ready for this sauce, okay? Once you got that smoke billowing off that pan slightly, you're gonna add your butter, okay? Now I'm, I'm adding approximately two tablespoons of butter, okay? I'm gonna go right in, it's gonna smoke, okay? If you have a window in your kitchen, open your window. If you have a hood vent in your kitchen, turn it on because you're going to get some smoke in your kitchen, okay? That's completely normal. That's what you want, all right? Don't get scared. All right, now I'm keeping this pan on and I'm seeing my butter starting to brown, okay? I'm going to stir up the butter a little bit. All right, now what you could see here is that I have brown butter, okay? The butter's not burnt, it's right before it burns. It's gonna have that nice brown look to it. It's got a very nutty aroma to it, which is key, that's what you want, okay? So you take that butter, you're gonna add approximately a teaspoon of your fresh thyme right to it, okay? It's gonna sizzle, that's what you want to happen, okay? Now you're gonna take your golden raisins and you're gonna take approximately a tablespoon to two tablespoons of your uh, almonds, okay? You can put those right in there. You're gonna squeeze juice in there, lemon juice right in there. Now, for this, I'm using about half of a lemon worth of juice. We're gonna put a little chicken stock in here. We're gonna use approximately maybe four, four to five ounces of chicken stock, okay? The next step, once you got that chicken stock in, is that you wanna reduce that chicken stock down, all right? You wanna have all the proteins that are in that chicken stock, you want them reduced so it, the stock really creates a very nice uh, sheen to it and it'll reduce down to a sauce consistency. And that's what we're looking for in this dish. All right, we're good. Okay, I took the, took the sauce off the heat. I'm gonna add my butter in there and I'm just gonna swirl it around, all right? You wanna get, grab your spoon and just kinda swirl it around off the heat. The residual heat from the sauce is gonna slowly melt that butter in and you're gonna develop a nice rich uh, sheen to your sauce and you're gonna develop a nice rich flavor. That butter's gonna enhance it quite a bit. All right, so the next step, this is the last step. We've got our three components ready, and we're ready to plate this dish, all right? This is a very simple, easy dish to plate, all right? All we're gonna do, we got our, we got our plate ready. We're gonna take our couscous mixture. Make sure you get all the goodies in there. It's gonna go right in the center of the plate. All right, we're gonna take our swordfish next. It's gonna go right on top of the couscous. Put it right on top of this. We're gonna take our brown butter sauce that we just made. Give it a little mix. Then we're gonna spoon that mixture right on top of the swordfish. Look how beautiful that looks. And we're gonna take a little bit of the sauce, kinda put it around the plate, just like that. 
We're going to take some of our fresh thyme that we have extra of. We're just going to put a little pinch right on top of the dish. Plate. Add that extra earthiness to it. Give it a nice wipe. This is the final product. Hawaiian sushi grade grilled swordfish that we serve here at the Dallas Fish Market. Savor wine and food with Jim White and Chef Randy Morgan at Dallas Fish Market. Enjoy.